your eyes do not deceive you. This is my second post in a row on insufferable content creator Shane Dawson, who decided to clickbait the world when he recently uploaded the video, okay, dot, 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 let's talk. Just days after breaking the internet by exposing the victimless scam of private label store brand products. A revelation that left him in a motel room wailing into a plate of dry honey nut Cheerios like a child who has been neglected by their gambling addicted parents. Only this situation is much darker. Keep crying out to your god, stupid boy. Oh god. For this is the world where one bite-sized cheddar cheese snack cracker looks identical to another bite-sized cheddar cheese snack cracker. And you spent your whole life worshiping a cardboard box that reads Jesus. Don't you get it? There is no god in the grocery store. <laughs> And apparently, the story of Shane losing his faith was so devastating that it required a prequel in the form of Shane vlogging his one single day of arduous preparation and studious research for the documentary that has since exposed the global for-profit food industry as a global industry of for-profit food, as well as a food industry that operates globally for profit. It's a lot. And trust me, that kind of hard-hitting story, which consisted of Shane taking an hour-long walk through a grocery store while pointing out all of the store brands requires ample preparation. Specifically, an hour-long walk through a grocery store while pointing out all of the store brands a day ahead of time. Great job, Shane. You really put in a lot of legwork there. I assume it was a lot of work for those legs that always look so tiny to me, like his lower half is a cartoon cat. So uh, grab a shopping cart and a shot of morphine so I can push you through the aisles of Shane's inner mind, which is littered with terrible outfits that he's too afraid to wear, B-side content that even he admits is of a quality level that nobody should have to sit through, and an uneasy afternoon alone with our hero. No Ryland or Chris to act as a buffer that normally keeps Shane from slipping back into his run-on sentence shock jock style of comedy that by age 26 had earned him millions of teenage fans that he had no problem touching inappropriately for meet and greet photos. Clean up on me because I am mentally vomiting onto the tile floor of my own inner mind. So take this caution wet floor sign as the final warning you'll receive before today's deja vu Dawson Shane flavored installment of a clip breakdown. <laughs> television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it into pieces like the private label bread that goes stale and we feed to ducks. That way we can look at each individual uh, crouton and decide if it's worthy of a duck mouth or needs to be put in a salad. I don't know which one is the, I guess it depends on how you feel about ducks eating you. Anyway, this video sucks, but before we get into the how and why and where it sucks, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on Sean Johnson. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, turn on notifications, and you'll always be like ready to attack these people. As you can see, I've cut off my sleeves and I'm wearing a hat. I'm in my era. We love. Okay, anyway, I was shocked when this video got uploaded because I was like, surely there's gonna be something about taking accountability. You know, there are still lots of things in Shane's past that he has not yet apologized for. He's very selective about the things that he's made a public acknowledgement of. I feel like the cat thing, which obviously was a, just a poor taste joke, uh, was a lot less offensive than the actual photographic evidence we have of him touching young people at the book signings he used to have. As a 26 year old, these were 13 to 16 year olds. He would say awful things to 12 year olds swimming around in his pool. I don't know why their parents would take them there. It's too much. But with a title like, okay, dot, 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 let's talk, you expect some answers. However, he literally meant, let me talk. And it's talk he does. Honestly, the whole video seems like him taking out the camera the night before he shot the video that I just covered, I feel like yesterday, if this video comes out when I want, on the store brand food conspiracy theories with Shane Dawson 2023. And he was like nervous. So he was getting the camera set up. He later admits he was testing to see 
see if his hair looked okay on it. Shane, just get over yourself. Put on a hat and then you don't have to worry about it. Actually, I sometimes have looked back at videos and I'm like, my hair looks disheveled, but that's who I am. Sherry Shevel. Sherry Dish, Sherry, Sherry D. Shevel. And her hair is always on fire. Shooting a video outside of my normal environment is definitely a challenge, but hey, I'm not somebody who's afraid to get their hands dirty. When it comes to rolling with the punches or even adapting my lifestyle to help benefit the future of this planet. And that's exactly why when my hands get dirty, I like to clean them off with the sponsor of today's video, Blue Land. When you look at traditional cleaning products, it's shocking because single use plastic is a true blight on this planet. Blue Land is way better for the environment. Blue Land uses no single use plastic in any component from bottles, tablets, wrappers, to shipping materials. And they're also EPA certified, which means EPA scientists have evaluated every ingredient in the product to make sure it meets Safer Choice's stringent criteria. Plus both products and packaging from Blue Land are cradle to cradle certified. And they've achieved platinum material health status, which is the agency's highest rating that was given to all of formulations. They have the certifications, mama. And how often do you find innovative products that are also affordable? Each Blue Land tablet, which is a full bottle of cleaning product, costs about $2.25. I've received the Hand Soap Duo, which contains two beautiful forever bottles, plus six different hand soap tablets in scents that I just love. I really love the lemon scent for my kitchen because it makes your hands after washing the dishes smell really clean. Plus the refill process could not be more simple. All you need to do is is fill your forever bottle with warm to hot water, then drop in one of your cleaning tablets and wait till it completely dissolves before screwing that cap back on. You don't need to go in there and stir it or shake the bottle. It's gonna dissolve on its own so you can just like walk away. And voila, the product is ready to use in minutes and you've just helped create a more sustainable future. If you're ready to experience the ease and quality of these Blue Land products all throughout your home, all you need to do is click my link below to get 15% off your first kit. Blue Land is sharing this exclusive offer with my viewers. We just gotta get the word out and help keep this planet healthy and humming while also our home cleaning and clumming. Anyway, Shane seems to be really warming up for the camera, trying to make sure that he's on for this video that he shoots with Chris's help the next day. But frankly, it's just more of the same. It's unsettlingly low quality as we've come to expect. The fact that he tries to position it like it's something else and then the clickbait title that just clearly plays off of the drama that he's involved with perpetually. And look at me, falling for it, making content about it. Let's dive in and see what Shane has to say. Uh, not sponsored, but this is the best butt plug I've ever <laughs> used. I'm gonna put two of these in at once. Watch me. Shane, stop exaggerating. That is not a butt plug. It's actually the exact opposite. Don't you remember what your visiting nurse said? The deep ridges are designed to help scrape out some of that fossilized buttercream feces that's been cementing you shut and causing those toxic shock symptoms. No, I'm just kidding. Visiting nurses can't go near that because it would force them to join the coal miners union and their hospitals just won't give them the time off to attend that mandated course on pickaxe safety. So yeah, he's telling the truth. That is Shane's butt plug, but to be fair, it was perfectly smooth before the first time he inserted it into his up the butt. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called it his up the butt. The medical diagnosis was high pressure, scraggly, craggly rock face rectum. He's so brave for sharing his story. The first thing I noticed, which I I recently did just because I was trying to compile really ugly photos of his hair. <laughs> I sound like it, this is my job. The point is, if you watched Shane Dawson in the olden days, like 2015, oh my God, I was in my 20s then, you will remember that he would just sort of say, 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 say a long sentence and then add in a shocking factor. I know, your panties are on the ground. Calm down, girl. Yes, I know the first thing you think of when you look at me is, damn, look at that bulge. Oh, I like to touch children's butt. That was Shane Dawson. I'm gonna cut to B-roll of him saying that so that I don't get taken out of context. And then he would stop himself and talk to himself and be like, wait, do I like to touch people's butt? I shouldn't have said that, that sounds wrong. And like that was the contrived sense of humor that we were supposed to love and adore, which if you were 15 at the time, maybe you did. If you were 15 then, you are 30,000 years old now. So this all feels a little uncomfortable. Everything's weird now, mom's 30. Five, I have 12 kids on the way. I don't want to talk about it. I do want to talk about it. I have 12 kids on the way. That sounds, I mean, I have 12 kids cooking. Or no, not, I have 12 potential kids that I could cook. That's worse. I have, I have a bunch of eggs with Rylan, with our sperms. And um, we have kids, we have kids coming, maybe, hopefully. I got a bunch of eggs and they are all expensive. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I- Dear God, by my count, that was like four intentionally taboo sounding sentences followed by swift, self-aware, self-interruptions. For this early on in a video, his historical record has been three. He usually shuts the f up by now. And the way he scream, laughed, snorted with zero life behind those soulless eyes. Shane has officially gone past the point of no return and I don't know what's gonna happen next. He's like the melting ice caps of being a 30 something with the same sense of humor as a eighth grade quirky girl. We gotta dial it back because nobody wants to be assigned to group projects with you. And it's also problematic to base your entire internet persona on this sitcom style ADHD that you probably self-diagnosed using a BuzzFeed quiz. His whole philosophy to comedy is that dog from the movie Up who's like squirrel or like those buttons from Hot Topic in the 2000s that would be like, I have trouble focusing. Oh, look, something shiny. It's like, we've heard it before. It wasn't funny then. And I want to push you down the stairs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Also, I should be talking quieter. My sisters are sleeping in my bedroom because because they're visiting me for my birthday this week, but I have to shoot this video. Sorry for waking you sisters. But seriously, I am glad that Shane doesn't come after me for copyright strikes the way that uh, Lionsgate likes to, or Epidemic Sound, which uh, is the provider of a lot of the music in his videos. The point is, I have to show you a really long clip. That's how long Shane is talking for. Who's texting me? It's about my will. Side note, did a will meeting today. Really interesting to think about what's gonna happen when I die. Somebody texted me and was like, Biden just shot down a balloon. And I was like, on his birthday? Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> don't piss lighting. There we go, I went to auto. I don't know what that means. My hand looks big. I look like one of those tiny hand memes. Ugh, what in the little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest? was that facial expression, Shane. We see you, always attempting to work the latest Gen Z trend into the online personality that you're constantly revising and rebranding so that you feel relevant or youthful. He said, these tiny hands are so mother, I fear. Mmm, not me being socially conscious, bestie. Grocery store scammies are giving me the ick, and that's on period, Selena team. Mama, do you think people don't see and hear how clearly born in the 1980s you are? It must be very strenuous to try so hard to appear naturally funny. No wonder those water bottles you shoved up your ass are starting to warp. You need to check your old timey telegram machine, man child. It's time to stop copying an artificial personality from other people you see on the internet because even those 20 year olds on TikTok who punctuate their meme references with a post verbal hand gesture think you're a and uh, that's on Team Selena's period, bestie, bestie, bestie. Oh God, I'm also terribly old. The purpose of this video is for Shane to, as we said, look at his hair, but he also decides to talk at length about other things he has going on. The most interesting news to me is that he has not given up the goat when it comes to dreaming of directing slash writing, I assume. But for now, writing some sort of major motion picture. He even goes into how he wants to get it funded and gives us a sample of the script. So what I've been doing lately is I've been writing scripts because I have two different movies that I want to make. I guess I'll give you just um, a piece of it. Slam! Her body falls off the ladder and hits the floor underneath, blood pouring out of her neck like a freshly slaughtered pig. Shane, as an unproven screenwriter, you sort of have to write what you know, and I can't imagine you climbing a ladder. Maybe lean into the story behind that slowly dying pig. That at least felt semi-autobiographical. He's like, her dumb bitch body fell onto the cold floor and slowly bled out. That scene is about a character named Rylandia, and she's the wife of our main character, a normal haired heartthrob named Sean Donaldson, who people say looks just like Chris Pratt, only even worse. Somebody let Hollywood executives know that Shane is overwriting another derivative slasher comedy inspired by Scream, all in order to resurrect his movie career. It's like this is Easter Sunday. And Shane is our edgelord Jesus, crawling out of that cave to kill some women. Every screenwriter's style is different, but just based on what I know from attending film school, this reads like more of a novel and an amateur novel at that. And no offense, but Shane kind of seems like the kind of writer who would confuse his simile with a metaphor. <laughs> Basically illiterate. Yeah, I'm roasting your 
the screenplay, Shane, and you just have to lie there and take it like that freshly slaughtered pig that you wish you could have sex with. Oh God, did you hear me just now? Edgelord Jesus lives within all of us. Calm down. If Shane can make jokes about himself being a sexual deviant, then I can also make jokes about him being a sexual deviant, but they're better jokes and not just the same thing over and over again. I will say real quick, most screenwriters try to keep a lot of that like very flowery writing that's visual out of the screenplay because that's for the director and the cinematographer to decide later on. If you want it to be sold, you don't want to like put a specific look and image into a director's head. And I'm highly encouraging Shane to let somebody else direct this if he's able to even get it financed. That's my plan this year to find a bunch of weird rich people in other countries who think I'm funny. Hey Dubai! Me? In a relationship with a man? Never! D that's Dubai, right? Is that, that's not offensive. Right, Dubai, they don't like gay people. Isn't it illegal? Ugh, the way I do it, it should be. That sounded. It sounded what, Shane? Like the exact same joke structure as your hard boiled baby eggs? Well, I don't doubt Shane when he tells us that his romantic life is riddled with sex crimes. This whole video, he's trying to make it seem like he's talking to us in a stream of consciousness and repeatedly has to stop and call himself out when things accidentally are blurted out that sound sad or exceptionally crass. But from watching a lot of Shane Dawson, I know this is just the way that he speaks when he's trying to be entertaining. Just blurting out anything that comes into to his head that might sound bad or exceptionally ass. In my opinion, Shane is bad at improvising, but even he on some level can understand when the jokes he's telling aren't going to land. So then he just keeps adding more and more and more, just digging himself deeper and deeper into the unfunniness until finally he makes the Hail Mary and tries to close it out with some sort of self-deprecating comment. Maybe some people will watch this and chuckle at the sheer volume of his words, thus proving that some people are basically Basic and terrible. Run on home now with your run on sentences, Don Sondon. I would be shocked what investor in what country likes Shane enough to put money into his movies. He literally bombed publicly every step of production for a movie that he had every opportunity to make into a piece of art. This was all covered on my <laughs> first and second million view videos where he was on the TV show The Chair and uh, produced as part of a reality show his movie Not Cool, which he just was like thwarting with his own dumb ideas minute after minute. It's hard for him to differentiate whether he's writing a movie or creating a dumb skit for his YouTube channel. At least that was the case back then. Now I feel like he has a hard time differentiating the fact that if he can't make a good YouTube video, there's no way he's gonna make a good full length movie. Like what? You can't even turn on a camera and hold it right. How are you then going to direct a cinematographer to make a gorgeous scene? You don't even have enough uh, of like humility to hire a good cinematographer and accept their advice. He thinks he knows everything. Anyway, if that wasn't exhausting, um, when Shane is talking about Girl Scout cooking, Cookies, he expertly lands another classic signature Saint Dauphin Shane Johnson joke by going off on another tangent of a hilarious yet true observations. Although once again, they're only hilarious to basic people and they're only true in that they reveal Shane's deeply rooted hatred of women. Girl Scout cookies are very expensive. I think they're like five bucks. Maybe that's cheap. I don't know, but with the attitude those serve you, like it's not worth it. Kidding, support the Girl Scouts. The moms are that's a side note. What was I talking about? Samoas! Oh my god, Shane Dawson is so random. He's like the human version of a golden retriever. And by that I mean he should have been chemically castrated before his first birthday. Taken from his mother as a baby. <laughs> Anyway, Shane then goes in to basically introduce the conspiracy theory that we covered on my last video about him thinking that somehow private label food products are illegal. His examples here are that there's, what is it? A party size bag of Doritos that has the same volume or like weight as the bigger bag made to share. And he thinks this is like mm, proof of some grand conspiracy. And I'm like, wouldn't they be okay? Depending on where the bag is sold or if they want to test which one sells more product. There's literally nothing illegal going on because he then shows that it's either way 500 grams. You know as a consumer that they're the same size bag. Even if the bags were different sizes but the same weight of product was in the middle, it's written on the front of it. The FTC makes it very hard for us to be truly deceived by that type of marketing but Shane is just realizing that this type of market research or packaging variations even exist and therefore the world needs to burn. He's also mad because there's like a divot in some of the packaging uh, like for a plastic container of olives and that's just there to make the container look more full. I think that, yeah, that is technically a shelf perception kind of deception on the consumer who will grab it and think like, oh, it's full. 
but they'll feel underneath that there's a huge divot in it. And either way, the weight is accurate. And I just don't get why Shane won't Google any of this, like, cause he wants to go into the video uneducated so that he can just purport to not know why anyone would ever do this except for a conspiracy. But I, again, feel like Shane just doesn't want fans who are willing to think about things with that type of mentality. He wants them to accept what he says as the only source of information so that they'll always believe one apology for all of his racism or just live in a world where anything Shane says is true and anything that critical thinking tells you is not true because he's the conspiracy theory guy. Anything he says is a conspiracy is a conspiracy. Like the conspiracy is against reading online articles because he won't do it. He just says something scary and then goes, oh. He does it so many times in this video. So anyway, he's going to the grocery store cause he needs to find Girl Scout cookies and the supposed dupes that are sold by Aldi. And like in every Shane Dawson video, that means he has to try on a bunch of different outfits. Like, do you wanna be a fashion vlogger? You wanna be a food taste tester? Then why are you making a conspiracy theory video that has no conspiracies in it? In this next clip, Shane proves that one of his other signature stylings in comedy is just asking himself 1 million questions. Oh my God, I'm so excited y'all. I've never said y'all in my life. Have I? He went on a hike with his friend. What is that like? Hikes? Friends? Huh? Like, what do you wear to buy a Girl Scout cookie? I thought about donating to like a shelter or something, but like, does anybody really need this? <laughs> like, maybe a gay shelter. Uh, yeah, maybe a gay shelter, dumbass. Especially since you live in Los Angeles, near the first LGBT youth housing development of its kind in the whole country that offers 25 modern, clean, safe apartments along with wraparound support services to queer young adults who are not safe in their traditional environment or just generally don't have the same privileges as Shane or I do. So that means they would, yeah, probably be very grateful for that shirt that you bought brand new from H&M to wear once on your shitty little podcast. Oh, but hearty har har, can you imagine a gay homeless shelter? It would be so funny if I sent them all of the essential items that I consider garbage. But I won't be sending them because I don't actually give a sh I don't know why Shane suddenly wants everyone on earth to think of him as the cool gay uncle who can just go to the store rocking an amazing Technicolor dream coat when he's actually a shame-based bisexual who's afraid to leave the house in anything that isn't all black and baggy and seems to really panic about going to the store without the accompaniment of his emotional support bottom. I'm not saying it's a bad thing for Shane to have anxiety or to only feel comfortable dressing a certain way right now, but for me, he's showing us all of these quirky colorful clothes and on the podcast, he's always trying to dress as brightly colored as possible. And for me, it's the cognitive dissonance between who he is and who he wants us to think that he is. He can only wear those brightly colored clothes on camera when he has full control over the way he looks. Even now, this video exists because he wants to fully control how uh, weird his hair is. He wants to ensure that it's peak weird when he shoots the real thing. Anyway, Jojo Siwa, show us what else you got to wear. It has Chucky on it. <laughs> this is like casual, right? Yeah, I'll just take a few tagalongs and Samoas and can I actually get one less of your Fucking judgment! Sorry, just thinking about those little scouts is triggering me. Oh good, we're yelling now. The current punchline is to be suddenly screaming with a jacket that's trying too hard. Yeah, we all remember TV shows from the 90s and although you would like us to associate you with Chucky from Rugrats, the bad one-liners and bubbling to the surface rage shouting are giving more Chucky from Child's Play. And we, the audience, are that babysitter that you push out of the kitchen window for your first kill. That sort of suddenly escalating volume volume of The Voice is another Shane Dawson classic, which pairs perfectly with him reminding us how he had a terrible childhood because there was no cable TV and he couldn't get new toys whenever he wanted. Things that I wanted as a kid that I never had because like my mom was like, go play with the box. And that box was everything. That box was a house, a rocket ship, a police car, a prison. Don't get me started. I lost my virginity in that box. How many other people lost their virginities in that box? What if that box was recycled into a bunch of Girl Scout cookie boxes? And what if those little bitches charge me for my own box? Jesus. Ugh. Good joke, Shane. You should save that one to tell your surrogate in case they ever need to induce labor. And then never tell it again, since you managed to embellish it with the made-up story about how you had sex for the first time in a cardboard box as a child. Also, who says how many other people lost their virginities? What do you? What is virginity anyway? That's such a dumb Christian thing. Never forget how Christian Shane is. He carries a leopard print cross in his pocket, which I was like, if you're gonna be Christian, I guess you have to be tacky, but you're doing it 
with a different sense of animal print. Also, I'm curious about Shane's editing. He cuts it together, so he seems, I guess, what some people would consider clever, but I want to know how many minutes passed in between these jump cuts where he was trying so hard to think of another way to force an unoriginal non-joke about his corkscrew pig <laughs> Although I did at this point just realize how kind of rare it is to see Shane get on camera all by himself these days. Even during the years that he shot conspiracy videos in that dark room, he had a producer behind the camera helping him along. But this video right now where he's just talking to the camera and making up a story and trying to be funny for 13 year olds feels remarkably similar to his early days of YouTube. Back in the 1800s, when it was socially acceptable for a 26 year old to be romantically courting a 13 year old. Wait, that was 2016? Wow, the camera quality on smartphones has really improved over the last eight years. So Shane, what's your excuse for this stagnant sense of humor that has been problematic and you don't seem to understand? Anyway, Shane it was like, oh, I'm gonna wear this Chucky Finster jacket. I'm gonna wear my Triceratop shoes. And then he puts on a gray jean jacket. But since he's trying trying out color now, it has lime green buttons. I'm like, baby girl, you're so deluded if you think that shows any sort of personality. You're dressed like you're working tech week as the sound designer on a school play, and you always have, and that's what you'll always be. Is that rude? So next up is uh, probably a two to five minute sequence that wastes my life while Shane struggles to get into a Tesla owned by his husband, Ryland, who isn't home right now, but we can make tons of content out of driving a car. Shane, I know drive. And I know he doesn't like to go places on his own, which like, that's fair. If you're nervous, you're nervous. But if I was Ryland, I would insist he go places on his own because this is insufferable. Oh my God, I don't fit in between the washer and the Tesla. Ah, it's squishing me. Okay, I made it out of the driveway. Okay, I made it to the store. This is like giving updates to a family member who's worried about me. Like, I got in the car, I made it to the store, I'm okay. Really, interesting how in that scenario, you're the calm one who's reassuring a worried family member because to me, this feels more like I'm your mom who has to put up with getting minute by minute texts from their anxious adult child with poorly managed symptoms, sending me excruciating updates along every step of airport security while they travel home for Christmas. As though my nervous system is also responding to their air travel with the same adrenal release as one of our prehistoric ancestors getting attacked by a jungle cat. Damn it. I just did that thing where I'm clearly making fun of Shane Dawson while also detailing an accurate story about how I was in my 20s. It can be really hard on my self-esteem. Was I just being empathetic or was Shane's anxiety that relatable to a previous version of me so I'm just being a hypocrite? But then I told you all about how that was a true story from my life which makes me relatable. But then it was kind of self-deprecating and that reminds me of Shane Dawson. As you can see, it's a lot for any human mind to unravel. So I'll just go ahead and peel off my own face skin so that I can pretend to be nobody for a while. Sorry, Nick's not home right now. He's currently a peeled off face in that jar. This is Johnny Muscle Skeleton Skullhead, and uh, I'd be happy to take a message. Anyway, next Shane heads into the Aldi for a rehearsal of tomorrow's big video shoot. You know, the one that involves looking at groceries and making us look at groceries. Only today, he rightfully points out that this is just more of what we're already going to see in the main channel video. Okay, I'm doing this in the other video, but look Look at that. Look how they literally set it up. So I was not expecting to be so shook by that story. I should have waited for tomorrow when we film this other video so my reaction is like bigger for that because I was not expecting that. Why, have you like really never been to a grocery store before? Or is your situational awareness just that abysmal? Jeez, no wonder you get anxious shopping at Aldi. Your prehistoric ancestors must have been constantly surprised by a hungry jungle cat sneaking up on them like the f***ing Hamburglar in the Pangea version of McDonald Land. And that comment was actually not hypocritical of me because I know for a fact, thanks to some tarot cards, that all of the early humans I descended from were actually very courageous and bravely survived one to three minutes after a successful childbirth. And then the psychic indicated some really out of pocket information about like giant sloths and bestiality in my bloodline. And I was like, that sort of explains my thick tree climbing toenails, but still this card game is weird. Also, it's very interesting to hear Shane say that he was aware that he should have waited for the main video shoot to preserve the shock and awe of him looking at cookies so that he could save like the bigger reaction for that moment. To begin with, the reaction you give in the main video is plenty big enough. Like I'm pretty sure once you compared the appearance of two different brands of caramel cookie dough ice cream, witnesses saw you pull the fire alarm and push Ryland off of a loading dock. But the fact that you just said out loud that you're in any 
any way conscious of how loudly you squeal at whatever nothingness is going on just confirms for us what I already suspected, which is you consider that big overreaction to be an important part of successful content. Really puts um, your, oh my God, oh my God, into context. All I'm saying is why don't you just be authentic on camera? Don't think about whether your reaction is big enough for your audience because the entertainment value of whatever you're doing should be based on more than just how extreme your reaction is. It should be based on the concept of it, like the, uh, the entertainment of the information or the clever way that you present it. There's nothing new or interesting about you being overly excited about a stupid thing. In fact, it's getting very tired. One interesting moment about this video though is when Ryland does return home, Shane gives him, I think it's a birthday gift. Ryland just seems a lot more, what's the opposite of insufferable? Ryland seems more sufferable in this video. And frankly, Shane and his relationship, if this is how they act in private, uh, like without Chris being the cameraman, then I can kind of see how the relationship works. I, it's weird to say, but I did get, I think what feels like a more natural feeling dynamic from them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> By the way, your reaction to that is more than when I got you like a Cartier ring. Well, let's unpack that. Did the Cartier ring also come with the on the spot obligation to get married and spend the rest of his life with you? When you proposed, did you confusingly get down on two knees like a kindergarten teacher helping him button up his jacket? Were you on a wet pier? Did you give him a dry kiss? I'm just saying. Anyway, Ryland puts on his wig and um, Shane, he's his main thing for this video because it's not the same video that we're gonna see tomorrow is that the Olive Garden salad dressing that he likes and pays $5 for also has an Aldi version for $2. These are the same dressings. I've already talked to them about this. I thought this was too boring for the actual video, so we're doing it here. Spoiler alert, it's too boring for this video too. Not that it really matters since the main channel video is just you doing this same exact thing over and over and over again, but for a longer period of time. First of all, why would you openly admit on camera that this is too boring for your audience to watch on that channel, but then put it over here on your secondary one? Like, do we like boring things more on the second channel? It's the same people. In fact, why would you knowingly save something that sucks for either one of your YouTube channels where millions of viewers will tune in? How is Shane's mind able to recognize that tasting two identical salad dressings is a super mundane activity, yet somehow feels fine uploading it to millions of people in in order to earn thousands of dollars in profit. There are many YouTube creators who have actual respect for their jobs, who work really hard to ensure that they never upload anything boring to their channel. Why would they? They wanna be seen as entertaining. Do you even care about this, Shane? And how are you planning to be a good filmmaker if you can't even be a good YouTuber? It's using the same basic skills. Obviously a narrative film is not the same as what I'm doing here, but if you consider yourself to be someone who's a artist of the visual medium, then you won't put out art of a visual medium that isn't up to your standard. And you're writing a script right now. If you can't manage to master filling up this hour of YouTube time with an entertaining story, why would anyone feel like watching a full length movie you wrote? I'm just asking for a friend. The friend is me. Technically it's a mole on my back with an irregular border, but it's fused to my spine and it uses my nerve endings to telepathically transmit its emotions and thoughts into my brain. We're currently arguing about what to make for dinner. Anyway, I'm almost done with this topic, but one more time, how did Shane also determine that tasting these salad dressings was boring, but then he basically gets full on cartoon awooga eyes, doing the same exact thing the very next day with two bottles of ketchup. Why does this household so strongly believe that taste testing some food items is in any way a unique or exciting thing to put on any of their channels at this point? If they both wanna just go on to review food like Shane used to do in his food videos era, then that's fine, but go all in. Eat and entire yak from Jeffree Star's backyard. Swallow one of his Birkin bags like a snake. But stop making it seem in the title and thumbnail like the video is about one thing, like buying your baby or exploring conspiracy theories, only to somehow always default right back to the main action being you and Ryland putting messy foods in your mouth. Not all that. You can't summon the creativity to do something that is remotely close to what the title, what the title would indicate, which is what you clickbait people into thinking. Like, what did you think people were thinking when they clicked the, okay, we need to talk title? You thought they were gonna hopefully see you discuss something. Why can't you just discuss that thing? Even if it's an apology or an excuse for not giving an apology, like at least then you're giving people what they actually asked for and what you are purporting to record every week. It's like, this one's gonna be so different. It's the same. Stop going to the grocery store. I'm so sick of it. It started out as a tongue in cheek joke about how they always go to grocery stores. And then he keeps doing it to the point where I'm like, he's trying to 
with me, but he's not, he's just that boring. Anyway, weeks later, I guess when they actually shoot this video, no, this is in their house still. The Girl Scout cookies that he couldn't find at Aldi come in the mail and he's able to do the taste test that he planned to with Ryland. Comparing Aldi cookies, which are dupes, AKA the same exact cookies that are made and sold by the manufacturer of Girl Scout cookies, Ryland seems to be more fun in this. I wonder why. If this is the same. Oh, we're saving money year round, baby. <laughs> That's the stop. How could you not just wanna like die eating these? I'm not accusing Ryland of being high during this shoot, but he is in a real good mood. And I think earlier on, Shane said he was going on a hike with a friend. In California, that means we're walking up some hill to smoke a joint. Wouldn't you just wanna like die eating these? Yes, <laughs> yes I would Ryland. I wanna die watching this, goes to show. Anyway, the video wraps up with Shane giving a heartfelt little sentiment to the camera where he gives his that, that soft voice that he loves to do when he's being sincere. Being like, I don't know if I'm gonna post this, but it was really fun to just get on camera and be happy funning again, be have funning again, which he says at the end of a lot of videos when he doesn't post for months. See you guys at some point. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. All right, I know Shane denied that he ever looks himself up on the internet, but there is no way he hasn't seen at least a few of those memes break through to his inner circle, making fun of that horrifying face that he makes. So that's how, why I assume it's completely involuntary, like a habit somebody might have if they've been a full-time birthday clown for their entire career, or even a part-time birthday clown who moonlights as a basement torture serial killer. What entertainers do you know in their mid thirties who can actually make an audience of young adults laugh through the use of silly face humor? That's right, the answer is Jim Carrey, in 1997 and nobody. But Jim Carrey is actually a trained comic with an understanding of physical comedy. He doesn't just wait until he can't think of anything else funny to say or has to break an awkward silence when he's done using his anxious, nice guy, soft boy voice to scrounge up some sympathy from the leftover viewers that were trauma bonded to him by watching his videos every day after seventh grade. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel sad or sorry for a person smiling into the lens like Pennywise the Clowns but for real, you know that's the same, but for real, that's the same animated Grinch thing he does with his mouth right when that ribbed for his pleasure water bottle finally makes its grand entrance into his up the butt space, which is what they call the twilight zone that's made for Shane's silicone sex toys. Anyway, good luck seeing Shane make that face ever again without having to wonder what's in his up the butt about it. But that's for another day, we'll analyze Shane's poop face, but for now, thank you so much for tuning in for my sequel to Shane's prequel to his conspiracy that was never to be. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for un... Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more Shane Dawson, Ryland vlogs, baby, baby it's cold outside content. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you, my lady. Click right here, that way you never miss new videos from me. The subscribe button is what I'm referring to. Also, I think I said didn't say thumbs up yet. It's falling apart, we're falling apart. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access virtual watch parties and bonus episodes and lots more cool stuff. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for looking at this generic sandwich meat and deciding that the world is over. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.